Welcome back to Brisket Medic. Today we're going to be focusing on fire management. We all know that in barbecue, a stick burner is something that we all love to have, but it's also one of the most frustrating and intimidating things to approach as a beginner. So today, let's go over a few tips and tricks that you can use to start learning how to use your stick burner at home. Remember guys, every stick burner is gonna operate differently, and even if you have the same as I do, your area is gonna take fire and fire management differently depending on your elevation, humidity, temperature, wind, all that good stuff. So use this as a basis to really build your own regimen for fire management. The first thing we have to look at for fire management is our wood selection. Now, there's many different things that you want to consider with your wood selection not only the species, but the size, the saturation, and your uh, continual uh, sustainment of fire in your coal bed. Now this is an oak species. This is actually the length that goes really well in my pit because my pit uh, has about a 20 inch deep firebox and these are eight to nine inches long. Now I wouldn't throw a split this size around in there because it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna smolder that fire and if the fire's big enough in this smoker uh, to burn this without smoldering, my fire's way, way too hot. So we like to split our logs into splits about this size. Now when you start comparing sizes, these are very comparable. However, a log or a piece of wood this size dries out very, very quickly because they dry out from the end whereas these uh, also drop from the end, but they have a lot more surface area. So I'll show you a sound difference in these. And first we'll throw down the larger split or the larger piece of wood that was split and show you the difference in sounds. Those sounds have a little bit of a different um, texture to them because all things are made up of cells and these cells still contain moisture. And the one that sounds hollow, the smaller one, it's because those cells are hollow. They have no moisture in them, and these larger ones do. You want to be cooking somewhere around 15% moisture in your wood at all times. Again, based on your species, environment, and preference. So that's why I don't use these. These will make, um, help it get really hot really fast, but they're going to burn really quickly and not give you a good coal bed. If you have splits of this size, this is about the size that you buy them from suppliers. I like to take a miter saw and cut them in half or cut them down to the size that I like them and then we'll split from there. Now that we've got our wood selected, let's talk about building a good coal base and how to get it lit. We're here at the firebox and as you can see, I actually have a basket that I use. Uh, this is a sort of a handmade one um, made from a, a grilling uh, top from Academy and you can buy these from like uh, Lone Star Grills and they work amazingly and they work very very well especially in these old country pits. Now I've got some fire bricks that I've lined in here as well to help that insulation factor and to keep my coals um, vibrant uh, without them smoldering out with the ashes. You can do all this you don't have to do that if you're a beginner don't jump in yet just just use the pit that you have and take these tips to learn that and then adjust as you're learning as you're becoming that master of that pit, the pit master. So what I like to do with these is I like to load these with lump charcoal and barbecue uh, briquettes. I use B&B. Got to have a good quality or like I said your coals won't stay lit. You won't get a good base. Um, I like to load these up, get a fire started with an oily paper towel or an oily piece of uh, butcher paper and I just soak that in tallow or oil or whatever uh, to get that fire started and I like it to build a great coal base and then I start loading on my logs. Let's do that.
you light all that up, get it slid in there before it gets too hot, and open up all your doors and vents to ensure that you're creating a good coal base. Now, some of the old school guys will say that you should just burn wood down into lump coal um, or wood down into red coals and shovel that in there. And that's great. That works absolutely amazing, but that's a lot of wood to burn down to make a coal base and that gets really expensive. So if you're buying wood, if you don't just have a plethora of it, um, go with lump charcoal. I used charcoal briquettes because I was almost out of lump. That was the bottom of the bag. You saw a lot of little small pieces in there. That's not um, normal for the whole bag of BMB. Generally, BMB just has really good uniform chunks. Uh, I go through a couple of those bags a week, so I try to use every bit of it. So I did throw some uh, BMB competition uh, char briquettes, but uh, they work really, really well. They're oak as well. I try to meet, match my coals uh, with my hardwood that I'm using to cook with. So we're gonna let this get built up and I'll show you what that bed looks like and we'll throw some wood on it from there. Once your pit's lit, you've got that great bed of coals. I like to go ahead and start throwing a couple of these on top just to really build that, uh, that next layer, but also uh, close down the lid at that time so that the smoke can start uh, working its way and that energy can start heating the pit up itself. This is gonna take about 30 minutes, guys. Lighting the pit up isn't always the fastest, uh, but uh, it's paramount to having a good coal bed. And uh, once you get your metal heated up on the smoker itself, it's gonna help retain that heat as well. Now, sometimes I also like to stack um, my wood splits on top of the firebox, especially if it's not an insulated firebox, and it kind of preheats them. Um, so that when I throw them in there, they're not gonna smolder any, they're gonna catch really quickly and you're gonna keep a clean fire that way. If you get one that's particularly wet, you can throw it in the smoker itself, kind of as a fire block to the meat, but also it'll kind of draw the moisture out of that uh, wood, much like it would if it was being cooked. But you don't wanna do that for too long because then you end up with something like a kiln drying wood uh, and that just burns way too fast and doesn't give you any coal base. Now, the part of sustaining this fire is going to be you watching it. And you gotta learn your pit. You gotta learn your supplier, a constant supply of wood, and learning your pit is going to be key to you keeping a, um, a constant um, consistency. I'm using that word a lot. <laughs> keeping a consistency in your fire management. It may take 15 minutes, it may take 30 minutes, it may take 45 minutes, depending on the thickness of your firebox, the insulation value, the quality of your pit and the quality of your wood. You could be adding a split every 10, 15 minutes or you could be adding a split every 30, 45 minutes. It all depends on your pit, your wood, your climate, all of that. And that's why this is just a basis, a fundamental uh, of information that you can take and apply and tweak to work for you. I hope you take these tips and tricks and you use them and build your own regimen to get started into offset stick burning cooking and join us into the barbecue family. If this has helped, please hit that like button, comment down below something that you may be having trouble with, an inquiry that you may have, or a cook that you like to see. And also, tell me what kind of smoker you use. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit subscribe. Guys, I love you. Dream World One.